Hello friends, welcome back. I am starting a new series MLOps and we will learn detailed MLOps content in this series. This is an evolving area where there is a lot of attention being given and I am sure this will be very interesting for you and you will have a lot of learning happening in this series. Before diving deeper into MLOps, it is very important to understand and cover the fundamentals and you also should understand what are the challenges that we face with respect to ML. So in the beginning session, in the first session, we will discuss the MLOps challenges and slowly we will dive deeper into MLOps concepts. It's a fun journey. It's going to be very interesting and you've got a lot of learning awaited. Challenges in ML model deployment. There is a shocking news that we have that 87% of YAML, or DL and data analytics projects or data science projects never make it to production. It is really shocking and it is not easy to digest. 87% does not make into production. Why is it so? What are the factors which is making it really difficult? We need to analyze that and understand and this session is going to enable you with that insight. The factors which govern the deployment of ML models is to be discussed. First, it is purely and fundamentally based on the developer's end goal what we require or what we see as the final goal and it should be including the prediction frequency, the latency related factors, accessibility and a little more things. Alright, we need to understand the YAML life cycle very importantly and very clearly first. You take any system there will be a life cycle. YAML is no different and YAML has got a life cycle and is a very structured life cycle and we are going to ensure that we understand the flow. The first stage is the problem definition. We need to understand what's the business we are trying to do. What's the core business? What's the core aim? And the last stage is going to be monitoring or optimization. There are many challenges associated in the ML lifecycle. Your business in case needs change, the stages in the model may have to be executed again. And that's definitely not easy. Also, there could be need for you to revisit a particular step before you go to the next step for the want of better results. Like, you may want to tune the previous stage to ensure you get the exact or expected results like accuracy or speed or something like that. So, we may have to revisit the previous stages and tuning may definitely be required. The adjustments are very important with respect to the ML life cycle. Adjustments and tuning can be done in terms of optimizing the model adding and removing features and more things are connected to it. The flow and stages are very clearly presented here as a very simple diagram. It starts with the business impact and the problem, then goes on to data collection and then preparation of the data, feature engineering, followed by that building the model and then testing and evaluating the model, deployment, monitor and optimization. You can see that all these are very nicely presented and we will start with the first step which is nothing but the business impact. First, you must get the idea clearly defined. The value and the impact that your idea brings it onto the table is very, very important to be analyzed. If you are not considering the impact, if you are not considering the complexities, the resources, the results, the timelines, all these are to be considered and in case you fail to consider, you may fail in the business. What can be the business impact? The business impact can be as simple as money, revenue, you may want to reduce the expenses, you may want to improve the performance or something like this. All these can be impact for the business. What should work towards solving the problem with the ML solution and understanding the problem is the key. The first stage is to understand the problem and the impact that it brings on the table. Let's go to the next stage, the data collection. How do we collect data? Is data collection an easiest step? Many of us really underestimate the stage and this is not very easy. It is very important to spend a lot of time here, in fact, to make sure that we collect the right data. Before we collect data, we need to ask ourselves with some questions like, what data needs to be collected? What are the different sources of the data? What is the type of data? What is the size of data? All these are to be clearly understood and that brings you clarity. And the data may have to be collected from different sources and it is always a good practice to have a pipeline for data collection. Please understand, data collection can be done in a number of ways. You can go with e-surveys, the web scrapping, click data, social media platform based data, 
website tracking, subscription data, registration data, image data from CCTV or camera footages, customer care data for voice related inputs. All these are the sources that you can use for collection of data. But before choosing one of these above methods or multiple methods, it is important to understand the requirement and choosing the appropriate method is most important. You need to choose data, understanding what are we building and what for we are building. There are many challenges associated with data collection and the data on the whole. First, the four V's. Velocity, the speed at which the data comes these days is really very heavy. Veracity, variety, volume. We call it four V's and this is a major challenge. Uniformity related challenges are really huge too. Storage related issues are also popping up. Combining data from various resources is another challenge. The next stage is data preparation. Collecting the data is challenging and I explained you the points. And here comes the next step which is also challenging. The format of the data is a major challenge. It is collected from various resources and mostly it is raw. So it has to be processed before usage and the data needs to be cleansed restructure or needs to be prepared properly so that it can go to the next stage. The process of getting the data prepared, the process of getting the data standardized is called data preparation. About 70 to 80 percent of the entire time in the ML project goes for this. Without this step, without data preparation being done appropriately, you may not be able to carry out exploratory data analysis and it's going to be tough for you. The main challenges that one could face during the data preparation could be missing values, the outliers, disparate data format, data standardization and as usual noise carries a very important weightage. You may have to face all this to get your data prepared. The next step is feature engineering. The name says it all, isn't it? One should get the input data ready in such a way that it can be fed to the model which makes it easier for the machine learning model by deriving meaningful features, data transformations and so on. The most commonly used feature engineering techniques include a label encoding, combining features to create new one, one not encoding which is a famous one, imputation, scaling, removing unwanted features and lock transformation. You can choose the appropriate method and get the feature engineering done. And the major challenge which we all face with respect to feature engineering stage is lack of knowledge and selecting appropriate features. The next step is very important, building the model. But before you get into the stage where you build the model, it is very important for you to ensure that all the previous steps are done properly. For an instance, if you are taking up the supervised learning approach, keep the training, test and validation data ready. Normally, a baseline shall be created and that can be compared with any subsequently development models. And then you can choose the apt one based on the comparison results. And finally, once the final model is all ready with the training data, we need to go ahead with the test data to check the model's performance. What could be the major complexities in this stage? The complexity of the model, computational power, availability of the resources, identifying suitable model, model training time, all this come as the major challenges and we need to face them. The next stage is test evaluate the model. You have built the model, we need to now go ahead with testing and evaluating it. This is a very important phase of it. The test cases shall be identified and the model shall be checked for performance against unseen data. You getting your model working on familiar data is not a challenge. You getting your model working on the unseen data is a challenge. If the performance is not satisfactory, you got to visit the previous stages, fix the errors, tune it, correct it and come back. What could be the major challenges? Insufficient test data or unavailability of appropriate data. Number of iterations that you need to really fix with. Identifying the platform in which you can go ahead and evaluate the model. Identifying the appropriate test scenarios. The logging and analyzing test results is a major challenge too. The next one is model deployment. Here is the real test coming for you. You are going to now expose the model to the end users. Your model would have worked fine with the test train data. But if it fails with the end user when they are handling it, the purpose is totally broken. So the factors which are to be considered here are the number of times predictions to be delivered, the latency of the predictions, the system architecture as such, the ML model deployment and maintenance cost, 
complexity of the infrastructure and major major challenges that come into this picture is portability related challenges scalability issues scaling up or down data related challenges and finally last but not but not the least security related threats and final stage is monitoring and optimization you need to check if the model's performance goes low over time i am using the model it is being used for a long time does it perform lower than what it is expected to we need to understand all these over time you need to check if the accuracy is all fine if it is not fine we need to work on it we may have to go for retraining we may have to go for retuning and we should also understand other metrics related to memory ram usage infrastructure related metrics system related metrics and even warning should not be left aloof you need to go ahead and analyze the warnings what could be the major challenges the data drift deciding on the threshold value for metrics that we consider anomalies and most importantly finalizing the model evaluation metrics that needs to be tracked all these are the challenges that we carry here i hope you found it very interesting in the next session we will learn more on ml ops and this series will continue for some more time if you have any questions suggestions inputs please go ahead and type it in the chat section if you like the channel please hit the subscribe button thank you